Coming up on this year-end special episode, we're going to examine the top and bottom 2022 performers in the ETF market. Plus, we'll take a look at why the popular 60-40 portfolio mix failed to protect investors in 2022. And I'm going to show you what I think is a better solution. Also, we'll touch on the problem of government overspending and why that's going to lead to not just dramatically higher debt, but also dramatically higher tax rates and how to protect yourself. And then we'll look ahead to 2023 and what you can expect to see from me. Let's take a look at our first chart, which kind of sums up what happened performance-wise across the major asset classes in 2022. Commodities were the runaway winners. And you got ticker symbol SDCI in this particular graph, which attracts a broadly diversified basket of commodities. You've got energy, agriculture, industrial metals in that particular ETF. And then uh, you take a look at how it did versus stocks, bonds, and real estate. And it was just lights out performance for commodities. Of course, runaway inflation certainly helped lift commodities as a group. And uh, that was the opposite effect for bonds, real estate, and stocks. Runaway inflation wasn't good. And neither were the Fed's aggressive interest rate hikes which all really, really hurt uh, those particular assets. Now, in terms of uh, industry sector performance, if we take a look at the top S&P 500 industry sector performers for 2022, you have one. One standout leader, and that was Energy, XLE, gaining more than 64%. And some of those leveraged ETFs tied to this same sector, ERX from Direction, as well as Gush, G-U-S-H. I didn't chart them here, but uh, they deserve uh, a special uh, mention. They did very well. And uh, we actually had them in a couple of ETF battles mentioned as wildcard ETFs. XLE was a wildcard choice by uh, a consistent choice by one of our judges, David Krenzis, who liked this particular ETF pretty much all year wrong. So that was the right call. Kudos to him. Uh, but you take a look at some of these other industry sectors, nothing really even came close to the performance of energy. The bottom performers were concentrated in those offensive, tech-oriented, consumer discretionary type of stocks, as well as communication services stocks. So that those were the, uh, the laggards. And then some of those inverse ETFs tied to these sectors actually were good performers because they aim for opposite performance. And uh, when these groups are falling, that means those ETFs that are inverse or short are designed to go up. So um, that's, uh, that's just something to keep in mind, too. You can make money when indexes uh, are crashing or, or, or sharply in a downturn. Now, in terms of our ETF battles winners, we started doing this a couple weeks ago on our Twitter feed. And uh, the link is below in the description section. I encourage you to hit our Twitter feed and... Over the past a couple of weeks, we've been announcing ETF battle winners from our 2022 season and uh, giving uh, the ticker symbols that um, that won their respective battle. We're get, giving them some, some kudos and then linking the specific uh, episode that uh, they won in that, uh, in that tweet. So be sure to check out our Twitter feed and we've got all of the ETF battle winners from season two or, or season 2022 in that feed. And of course, we'll be tracking our 2023 winners in our upcoming season. Now, in terms of ETFs below their COVID lows, this is from our friends at uh, Bloomberg Intelligence. And if you just take a look at the ETFs from this list, they are dominated by uh, the Cheech and Chong ETFs from the cannabis sector. You've also got a couple of Chinese ETFs in the mix. Chinese equities as a group were not good performers. And then uh, you also have a couple of oddball ticker symbols in here, like the SoFi Be Your Own Boss ETF. I, 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 between you and me, I'm bullish on being your own boss. I think that's still a good trend. But uh, clearly the stocks in this ETF uh, did not react very well or haven't reacted very well since the COVID lows um, I haven't taken a look at that specific portfolio, so I don't even know what's inside of it. But anyway, this is an interesting chart. It gives you and helps you understand just how severe the declines have been uh, for some of these ETFs. Now, let's take a look at the 60-40 portfolio, which is a popular mix of uh, 
of, of stocks to bonds. Of course, 60 representing the stocks, 40 representing the bonds. You know, the idea of this strategy is that, well, when stocks are falling, the bonds should be the stable part of the portfolio. Um, they should be up or flat. Well, that didn't happen in 2022. It also didn't happen in 20, uh, 2008. Um, and this, uh, this chart kind of gives you a history of the performance. Most years have been up for the 60-40 portfolio, but what I want you to understand, I'm not, I'm not attacking the 60-40 portfolio other than to say that using bonds as a margin of safety tool is completely wrong because bonds can and do lose value, and sometimes they lose value in a big way. Uh, the losses for some of the, the broadly diversified bond ETFs like BND were double-digit losses, and that stings when you've got loss, sharp losses happening in stocks. And so this is especially important for you to understand that bonds are not the right tool to be using as a margin of safety asset because they don't offer principal protection and uh, they are not free from volatility. And so, again, I think the lesson for 2022 is pretty clear, is that bonds cannot and should not be used as margin of safety instruments. You cannot rely on them uh, during markets that are volatile or unstable because they, they may react in the same manner. Now, this leads to what we have been talking about on this channel, our margin of safety investing tool, which we're going to be launching in 2023. I've got a link below. You should become or join the, the, uh, the, the waiting list. And uh, once we launch this tool, you'll be the first one to have access to it. We pay homage to investing great Benjamin Graham. He was the one that came up with this wonderful strategy. He lived through some terrible markets. He lived through uh, the 1929 stock market crash. He lived through the subsequent Great Depression. He knew a lot about bad markets. And so his margin of safety concept or strategy was really designed um, to give investors some cushion. Now, he applied it to how an investor selects individual securities. We take that same concept and we apply it to how an entire portfolio is managed, not just to how the individual pieces are selected. And so this is how you can navigate difficult markets by having an adequate cushion, an adequate margin of safety. And uh, our tool um, not, is not just inspired by Investing great Benjamin Graham, but it also pays homage to him. And it's, it's a reminder of the uh, fact that this particular strategy, this is what I call the three pillars of, of, of prudent investment management. It's not just asset allocation and diversification, but it's also having an adequate margin of safety. Those, those are the three pillars. Now, let's talk about what's going on with uh, federal debt, because this is a very uh, ominous trend that's been happening. We, we saw a $1.7 trillion overspending bill that was just approved. This, this official name is called the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2023. That's what it's called. Try saying that 10 times. And um, keep in mind that this is the ugly sequel to the $4.5 trillion already spent on COVID-19 disaster relief that was passed in 2021. So here we are. They've already spent $4.5 trillion and counting. Now here's another almost $2 trillion. U.S. government debt is already 100% over GDP. It's going in the wrong direction. And we have seen runaway spending, runaway debt. It keeps going higher and higher. And this next chart shows the problem. One of the problems is not just the, the runaway spending and runaway debt, but now look at the net interest costs with higher interest rates. We've got almost $8 trillion, a little over $8 trillion over the next 10 years that's going to go just to, just to service the cost of all of this accumulated debt. That's not even to pay it back. It's just to service this debt, $8 trillion alone. And so this is a problem, folks. How is the government going to spend this type of money? They don't have enough tax re revenue to, to pay for all this. And so everyone's game plan for 2023 and beyond should be to shelter as much money as you can into your tax-free bucket. 
That includes things like Roth 401k, Roth IRA, Roth IRA conversions. You got to get money into the tax-free bucket before U.S. income tax rates skyrocket. And they're going to skyrocket because the government doesn't have any choice. They can't borrow themselves out of this problem. They can't spend themselves out of this problem. They can't print themselves out of this problem. They have no choice. They have no choice. And so the current tax revenue coming in cannot support all this overspending. And so substantially, dramatically higher tax rates for everyone, unfortunately, is ahead. It's not just going to be the rich, right? Of course, the poor don't have any money to, to be taxed, but everyone says, well, the rich need to pay more. Well, you know what? There's not enough of them. There's not enough of them to pay for all of this overspending. And so that's going to leave a large part of the burden on the middle class. And so it's important that right now you, you begin to protect yourself because the clock is ticking for protecting yourself. Time is running out to get money away from your taxable bucket, away from your tax deferred bucket into the tax free zone. By the way, I'm going to be helping you do this. I'm going to be talking a lot about this in 2023 on this channel. I'll be doing a live retirement planning webinar in January and February. We're planning two of them, and all of you are invited, and uh, I will be teaching that along with a colleague. He's taught this same class to over 61,000 CPAs. We're going to bring it to you, and attendees are going to also be given a, an ebook that's published by ETF Guide. It's just been updated with all the latest 2023 numbers. The book is called 60 Smart Ways to Retire Better. And so all attendees of that webinar will be getting this free ebook, and uh, it's going to be epic. I'm really looking forward to it, and we are going to prepare you for retirement. So if you're in the retirement zone, if you're recently retired or nearing retirement, uh, you definitely want to attend. And again, I will have more for you on this. Details about the exact dates and registration links. There's not going to be any cost to attend but you will have to register. We're going to have limited space. And so that's coming in 2023, January and February. I'm, I'm really excited about it, uh, if, you, if you haven't noticed. Now, let's take a look at uh, just kind of recapping what you can expect from me in 2023. We've got our margin of safety tool, which is going to be de debuting at etfguide.com. Again, I want everybody to benefit from this. Hit the description section below. Um, join the waiting list, and uh, you will be among the first to benefit from that. We're also going to have uh, the announced dates for that live e-learning workshop on retirement planning and, and positioning yourself for the wrath of higher tax rates ahead and how to get yourself out of the firing line. Also, I've got a new program, a new original series that will be launching in 2023 that I'm super excited about called Portfolio Makeover. Oh my gosh, this is going to be exciting. We're going to take a look at individual viewer portfolios. I will tell you the, the strengths of those portfolios, the weaknesses, and then the areas that I think can be improved. And that's going to be Portfolio Makeover. So if you want to have your investment portfolio looked at, and analyzed. And of course, we'll do that anonymously. We're not going to you know, give people your social security numbers and your home addresses and all that. But again, I want you to understand that this program is, uh, is really meant to help you understand what it takes to build a architecturally sound investment portfolio. And so I'm really looking forward to it. Also, I've got a new book coming out that gets released in the second quarter of 2023. And I'll have more details on, on, on that as we get closer to that. And then also we've got new seasons for ETF battles as well as First Look ETF and Spotlight to look forward to. So it's going to be a, a very, very busy year uh, for us. And we're excited uh, to bring this new programming to you. Would you like to take a look at the uh, logo for our Portfolio Makeover show? Well, here you go. There it is. You're going to love it. And uh, I'm really excited about this program. And um, those of us that are beginning to get our annual statements, maybe you're not happy with what you're looking at. Maybe you're concerned about the trajectory of your investments. Maybe you're looking for ways to improve your portfolio. You're not sure exactly where to start. 
Go to PortfolioReportCard.com. I will analyze and grade your investment portfolio in five key areas, cost, risk, taxes, performance, and organization. And I'll tell you exactly how you're doing. And then uh, we'll also take a look at possibly featuring your portfolio on that original series portfolio makeover. So that does it for today's uh, program. I want to thank all of you for a fantastic 2022. Boy, uh, what, what a great time we had this year. Uh, despite difficult market conditions, um, I know that 2023 is going to bring a lot better things for you. And But the key is you got to prepare for, for what's ahead, right? You got to prepare for good markets, bad markets, choppy markets. But the main thing is we're going to be here to, to walk you through it. And uh, a huge thanks to all of you for supporting ETF Guide TV. We just crossed 21,000 subscribers. We're very proud of that. And uh, thank you, all of you, for, for participating and watching and being so loyal. May good health and prosperity be yours right now and into 2023. We'll see you there.